Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Innovation Pods. This time we're out in the ID Buzz. Uh, this is the family van based on the ID platform. Um, it also comes in a cargo version, which I'm very interested in trying. Maybe I could do that later. Let's see. Uh, thank you to um, Dolly Soto for lending me the car. As some of you maybe know, I work in construction and I've driven my share of vans over the years. And this one is very quiet. Interior is very nice. We'll get to the interior. You sit very high in this one. I think you sit higher in this than in most of uh, these kind of cars. Forward visibility and side, forward and two sides are very good. Big, nice mirrors, comfortable, relatively quiet. Um, today is going to be, we're going to do the usual test. It's going to be quite interesting because it's been snowing. So, yeah. Slightly discouraging uh, conditions on the road now because it might be uh, black ice on the road and I don't really want to crash this thing. So we just take it cool and easy. Uh, I found the chip computer and it's telling me that since I picked up the car uh, it's been averaging 265 watt hours per kilometer. Now some of you might think well, that's atrociously high, but this is a big car, this is a van. And if, if, if I compare with the um, car I use at work, for instance, the Peugeot E-Expert, that's been running 350, 400 now, so no, this is rather nice, actually, considering it's zero degrees outside and atrocious driving conditions. It'd be better if it was just snow, because you have, you have grip on snow, you don't have grip on ice. So, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't feel, it feels safe and, 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 and it doesn't give you any scary moments. The, uh, the um, lights are very good. Uh, it's running on adaptive uh, high beam now and it's, I must say, that these, these lights are probably good. Now the door is open, you can see here. It is turning the interior light into a warning light, which is nice. Here you have your buttons, your lights and stuff. Uh, Cubby hole, big door pocket. Let's just turn all the lights on, shall we? There. Cup holders, this part is a bit cheap, but it's based on a van. I mean, seriously, look at this. It, it looks brilliant. It feels mostly okay. This is padded. This is a bit cheap, but you know, okay, fine. The rest there is okay. Lots of space, big door pockets. Lots of space down here. Um, where's the storage thing here? There's supposed to be more storage here somewhere. Really? I can't find it right now. But, um, and here you can. Remotely open and close the doors. Rear seats are massive, lots of space. Uh, here you have the consumption number since we since I picked up the car, and you have your average VW slow moving. Oh, look! It suggests uh, it suggests charge spots, which is nice. Um, how do I get this thing to go away? Map. Yeah, it's a bit slow, but that's how we W are. So, yeah. Um, where's the home button? Oh no. Mm. Thank you. Space. That's big. And um, uh, wireless charging, two USB C's, USB C's in the rear doors. Nice. This part here, this, it looks really nice. 
the uh, black piano black uh, uh, capacitive touch crap buttons but they work and you get used to them so that's fine this little screen here turn it on uh, I like this display it's small gives you what you need of information and uh, you can have your chips up here as well. It's all very nice. More people really should do this. Toyota, for instance. Um, it's really spacious. So it's a van. But it's a nice van. Been on the road now for about an hour. Uh, driven 50, 50 kilometers. This one has a proper chip computer. Not all the cars have that. And this one has. And that's so nice. Because then I don't have to do all the math. Uh, which I'm rubbish at doing anyway. So, uh, good headlights, adaptive. The, I think they're adaptive anyway. Uh, they seem to work very well. Very good interior lights as well. Uh, as you can see, it lights up the interior very brightly, even on a dark day like today. There is no glass roof in, in here either. Not that it would matter now, because it's dark outside anyway, but but yeah. Uh, had an average consumption of 256 watt hours. It's been averaging 250, 270. Um, average speed of uh, 44 kilometers an hour. 67 percent, 206 kilometers indicated. So that means we've been used. We, we we've used. Uh, 14, 15 percent roughly going here, so yeah, I'm gonna be excited to see the consumption on the motorway and the sound levels because here on the country roads it's pretty quiet. Now on the motorway, um, adaptive cruise zone, it's working, of course it is. Yes, there's a bit of wind noise in there, but it's a big car with huge mirrors, which will get rid of noise. Very good mirrors because they're big. Now I drive a van in every day at work, so I'm sort of used to this. Uh, if you're not used to it, you might say this is noisy, but it really isn't. I mean, you can sit there, two people, and they can have you can have an average conversation, and it's relatively quiet. There's less noise in here than there is in, for instance, the Volvo C40, which is surprising. And this is on the Norwegian tarmac. Of course, if there's really, really bad tarmac, then there will be more noise from the tires, of course, but I'm impressed. But it's easy to see out of and easy to place. Uh, it, it's, it's a long, long car, of course, but even so, you're not, not worried that you haven't seen anything when you're changing lanes, for instance. Now we're almost at the end point soon. Um, with 26 percent, indicated 71 kilometers, and we're doing it. Uh, driven. Given that we have done around 160 70 kilometers, uh, 165 kilometers now, we didn't start off with 100 percent, we started off with, uh, with 84. And we are at 24% now. You can easily do 250 kilometers in this car, I would imagine. At least 200 plus. Somewhere between 200 and 250. With a full charge. On a mixed winter's day driving. I mean, I drive a Peugeot e-expert uh, on the job. And that does not do that on the winter day like today. It does 250. Maybe 170, 80 if you're lucky, because it doesn't have a heat pump and it's terribly inefficient when it needs to run heating all day long. On this one, yes, you don't get the 400 kilometers you will get in summer. Of course, you will have a drop in range, but you will have a small drop in range because the car is more efficient. That's the entire point. Back to it all boils down to efficiency. You can throw a hundred kilowatt hours pack in this car and you get great range. Yeah, okay, fine. But it's always better to do that range with less battery, make the car lighter or light. It's 
heavy as we've seen, 2.7 tons. Uh, but still, great boot in this one, spacious, brilliant, good, massive, masses of space in the rear seats, wonderful lights, enough power, heated steering wheel, and I mean, decent sound system. Um, I'm really impressed with this one. It runs sub 300 watt hours. Yes, it doesn't have a front, but if you look at the car, it's a van, man, you can just and it get the come it comes in a van as well. I think I would have to test it because I want to see how big the difference in interior noise is. Because the area have a lot of padding and cladding and the seats and the interior of the car. In the van you don't have that. Then you have a more pared down interior as well. Even the Norwegian tarmac, which is awful noise-wise, it's completely okay. And the power delivery is smooth, and the region is good, and it has auto hold, and it just... Oh, after complaining all the little things in the Toyota, the tiny details, and that just... In this run, it's just brilliant. Everything it just works. Yeah, and one thing about this um, system they have, I, I haven't run nav anywhere, uh, so I haven't navigated anywhere, but it still tells me on the instrument cluster seven oh, 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 changes in, in, in speed. It tells me about say, 50 meters ahead, you know, it gives X zone ahead. And, 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 and now it told me about the roundabout coming up and stuff like that. I'm yeah, I like it. I like it. I wasn't aware of... I've never seen anything quite like that before. And it also, when you run adaptive cruise, it gently takes the speed down, so you matches the speed you... the speed of the zone you're going into, so if you're going from, say, 90 to a 70 zone, for instance, you, you have 70 kilometers now when you arrive at the side, not, like, Tesla does, which breaks afterwards, most of the time, which is, well, not exactly very good, is it? No. The result is not to improve it, but that's sort of, does this in a very gently manner. Well, I've done uh, 186 kilometers in this map, they indicated 41 kilometers left, 60%. I mean, we started off with 84. Seats are good, lights are very good. Uh, the instrumentation is good. It's an easy car to drive and you easily get uh, used to the size of it. The range is really, it's the best range in its class. It doesn't really have any competitors that does the range this car does. And uh, it's priced okay. Yes, there's a few cheap bits in the interior if you go looking for them. But there's that. That's we've established that's not a problem. That's just how things are. You have to live with that. Um, yes, the VW if damage is the best in the world, but it's far from the worst. And actually, you can get used to this one. Not a problem. I still haven't gotten used to Peugeot's if they have system, even after owning a Peugeot a year. So, there is that. Just have to say thank you to Dalit again for lending me the car and uh, just, uh, congr just congratulate VW on making the best car in this class. Hands down. It's just, yeah. Brilliant. So, I do hope you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.